Okay, so go ahead and tell me your name again. It's Makona Jenkins. Makona Jenkins, and you're 31 years old. Yes, sir. And uh, you wanted to come in to uh, for me to do an evaluation on you for the um, for Hashimoto's uh, in an effort to educate other physicians you know, on how to address this, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. And um, and so we'll again use this. Uh, we have your consent to use this video to educate other physicians, all right? Yes, sir. Okay, so go ahead and tell me um, what brought you in. What, what is your primary concern today? Um, <laughs> amongst many and various other things, I think a lot of what's been going on is not addressing uh, the thyroid disease and not finding a doctor that's aggressive enough to treat me. Tell me, though, what symptoms that you're having that made you seek out medical attention. Um, mostly fatigue. Uh, as you can tell by looking at me, insane weight gain. Um, a fuzzy memory. And, of course, hair loss. So go back and, as far as you can remember, to when you started experiencing these symptoms. Um, the weight gain I've had my entire life. Now when you say my entire life, <laughs> does that mean from birth? Or? Um, actually, no. I was born at six pounds. It started, started right around three, I guess the weight gain, and uh, I've always been the chubby kid, so. How old was your mom when you were born? 29. Okay. That's because after age 26, 27, it's very common for women to have hypothyroidism when they're pregnant and it sets up the, the stage for a baby with low thyroid and um, a uh, propensity toward weight gain so okay uh, the hair loss started when I was in high school so around 16 we're in age 16 okay so many times then after puberty comes on and you start producing your hormones, particularly estrogen, which has an antithyroid effect, then that's when we'll see kind of the full-blown symptoms start to appear. Now, around that time also, around 16 or around puberty, did you start experiencing problems with your menstrual cycle? Uh, actually, I had my first period at 11, and I had my second period at age 18. And then, of course, when I was 21, I bled from January into June the next year. <coughs> so in 2001, they've always been really irregular. Okay, and that's a, another manifestation of low thyroid. So, again, probably you started out life low thyroid and it just never got detected. Resolved. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so what did they do about that vaginal bleeding? Um, they, they were taking blood work and uh, they finally ended up putting me on uh, ortho ever at the birth control patch, which I'm now off of because I don't meet the weight standards that fall within it. When did you stop it? Uh, I stopped the Ortho Evra in 2004 or 2005. I've slept since then. <laughs> uh -huh. It's been a while. And who was managing this? Which doctor um, was managing this? The doctor in Alpine. Oh. Oh, he's at Alpine Medical Clinic. Okay. 
the that whole clinic was kind of interchangeable too. Right, so right, right, right. They managed that. You're right. Okay, so you stopped the uh, the birth control pill in 2005, and then did the vaginal bleeding come back? No, I haven't had a period since. So I'm sure I'm due. <laughs> it's uh, inevitability. Okay. And then at what point was your thyroid tested? Um, my thyroid got tested... Well, it's been tested in 1985. That was the first time it was tested? Ever, yeah. I was, uh -huh. still, I, I was still a kid. And then again, the very next year. And then again in... So that first one in 85, was that, did they say that was normal? It was normal. Mm -hmm. It's always come back normal. Ex until 2003 or four is when it started coming back bad and they found uh, growth on my thyroid during that time. They who? Uh, they being alpha and oh, they, Okay. So <laughs> how was the growth found? Did a test come back negative and then they examined your thyroid or did they examine your thyroid? Uh, at that time I was being treated for fatigue. Uh, getting B12 shots every other day um, and uh, they started taking blood work. They found an anomaly mm -hmm. in the blood work during that time and uh, sent me in for a uh, sonogram. A thyroid sonogram. Yes. And that's when they found the growth. What, did they give it a name? Um, they called it a nodule. A benign nodule. A benign, yes. Yeah. It came back negative for cancer. Um, and dur during that time, I also saw Adcock in Midland. Mm-hmm. She threw out her test results. I came to Amarillo, saw Wingo, who then took her own blood tests and did an uptake scan and a biopsy. Uh huh. And did that show anything? Uh, the the biopsy actually, when she went in to pull tissue, the nodules were no longer there. Okay. And then how was your uh, lab work then, Dr. Winko said? Um, the thyroid lab. She said that she, that's when I got diagnosed with autoimmune thyroid disease. When was that? Um, that was in 2005. I have actually those records. They're not with me today, but I can present said documents. Uh -huh. Okay. And so what was the course of the treatment then after she found out you had Hashimoto's? Um, she said because I was hypothyroidic 80-90% of the time and hyperthyroidic the other 10% of the time that there was really nothing she could do until I developed cancer or until it killed itself. So, on your lab work, it was showing that you were hyperthyroid, or at, at sometimes it would show different at different lab work. Right. Sometimes high thyroid and sometimes low. Right. Right? Okay. But because one day I would experience um, what would be like a manic episode of being up all night and. Uh, really having the motivation and the energy to do things yeah. without any help, you know? Right. That because I did that once a year at that time, she wouldn't treat me. Right. Okay. And now that doesn't happen at all. <laughs> so now you're just all the time tired all the time. Oh, my gosh, you have no idea. Some uh -huh. days just to get out of bed is a chore. 